ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others, those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Holy Oh. 
God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that you never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood. And never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Oh, 
shout aloud and sing for joy, O daughter Zion. Great in your midst is the Lord, the Holy One. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O daughter Zion. Christ also suffered for sins, once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And the baptism, which is prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. You are me, Oh, God. 
from Mark. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved with you, I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. These last few weeks of winter weather have been so dreary that when I was reading St. Mark's description of Jesus's time in the desert, being threatened by wild beasts and tempted by the devil himself, I was thinking, well, at least there was no snow there. It sounds kind of nice. It goes to show how all this white stuff and the stupor it lulled me into can play tricks on the mind. But the deprivations and general unpleasantness of Jesus' time in the wilderness weren't the point. Jesus wasn't exactly an ascetic. He enjoyed feasts and festivals as much as the next rabbi. And although Mark doesn't come out and explain why Jesus went to the wilderness, or rather, why the Holy Spirit drove him there, he shows us the reason by connecting the wilderness sojourn to the inauguration of Jesus' public ministry. The Gospel writers make repeated references to Jesus' own spiritual practices. They show him worshiping and teaching in regular services, praying spontaneously in the course of daily life, and intentionally interrupting that life to get away from the crowds and focus on prayer. We would do well to follow his example. But this time in the wilderness feels different, in part because of the sense of confrontation and danger, both corporeal and spiritual, and in part because Mark shows Jesus's entire ministry as proceeding directly out of his time in the wilderness. His ministry and quite likely his death, too, for Mark includes the detail that John the Baptist was arrested while Jesus was in the wilderness, foreshadowing Jesus' own arrest, and thus his passion. The season of Lent isn't about deprivation. Lent is about renewal, recommitment, and growth, and our preparation for the wonderful things God has in store for us. One way we can prepare is by searching ourselves honestly for things that are preventing God's will from being done in us and rooting them out. Giving up things that distract us from that work can be helpful though, but the goal of Lent is lasting positive change. Although John the Baptist was a good man and indeed a saint, Mark also uses John as a symbol of the old way of doing things. Therefore, John has to be out of the picture before Jesus can begin to bring the fullness of God's grace into the world. To go a little further out on a limb, I would also see John as symbolizing human virtue and its limitations. Even though John the Baptist is a deeply righteous and spiritual person, he is still just a man, 
unable to accomplish the full breadth and depth of God's will for himself, let alone for all creation. Only God can do that, and God has chosen to do so through God's Son, the Beloved, with whom God is well pleased. In any case, our goal is the same, to accept, and I would hope embrace, the glorious new things God is doing for us and for the world. This involves necessarily an openness to change, change in ourselves, in our circumstances, and in our understanding. Human nature makes us fearful and resistant to change, but the deeper our trust in God, the more open to those changes we will be. A life of public and private prayer, sacred worship, and engagement with the scriptures helps us to develop this trust and the wisdom to discern which changes come from God and which ones do not. This season of Lent is our annual wake-up call, the Church's way of shaking things up and encouraging us to shake up our own lives. If you haven't done so already, I urge you to take a little time to think about these things and share those thoughts with God in prayer. God will do great things for us, but we also have to decide to make the effort we need to make so we can be ready. It's as if God has already cleared all the streets and highways of the snow of sin, but to get onto those streets, we have to clear off the cars of our own souls. Okay, maybe that was a bit much, but you get my point. We also know that just as some of us aren't able to do all the manual labor of snow removal ourselves, we can also get help with our spiritual growth. I would be glad to talk with any of you who might want some suggestions or just a different point of view in your spiritual journey. I would also be happy to help you find a trained spiritual director and the other resources the church has made available for these purposes. Whatever you do, do something. For Jesus carried out his ministry with a sense of urgency appropriate to the eminence of God. Lent and winter and the pandemic and the status quo of our own lives can feel interminable and immovable. But Lent reminds us that God's change to something better is very near. Get ready now, for God is already on the move. Church, 
kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Let your way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations, and as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. I invite your own intercessions and thanksgivings at this time. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory and we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, 
our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Let us bless the Lord. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. 